Gary, thank you so much for joining us. It's wonderful to have you here. Um, you have been working at Blue Origin for 17 years. This is a huge milestone. How are you feeling? I'm feeling great. I'm feeling very confident we're going to have a safe launch tomorrow. And, uh, and I'm feeling very proud to be a member of the Blue Origin team. You're in charge of the design of the rocket. Tell me what your level of confidence is that tomorrow will go 100% as planned. We have high confidence, and it's not just because we've flown it successfully 15 consecutive times, which is a rarity for a brand new vehicle to fly it successfully 100% of the time. But we have done so much test and analysis on the ground. I mean, the public sees the flight test, and we describe that as like the tip of the iceberg. They're seeing what's floating above the water, but below the water, we have done hundreds and hundreds of tests on components, uh, on the engine, in simulation, and it gives us very high confidence that it's going to be successful tomorrow. So, hours now leading up to launch, where are you on your safety checklist? Pretty much safety is a checklist in terms of, of what we need to do before launch is done. Right now they're doing the final preparations of the vehicle. We have cleared all flight constraints. So we're going to be rolling out tomorrow and just executing the procedure by the book. Now, the big question, of course, is weather, and many space launches don't happen exactly right. on time. Um, yesterday, we were told that weather looked good, especially in the long launch window, but thunderstorms have been moving in. We drove through a lightning storm right. last night to get to you. What is the weather looking like now? The weather forecast is looking good right now, but that could change. So we continue to monitor the weather. If the forecast does change and become unfavorable, there is a risk of delay. And what's the backup window if that delay happens? We just go day for day. Day for day. So would it likely be happening on the same day? Could it happen on the same day? Would it be pushed to tomorrow? It would be I mean, pushed to the following morning. So if you miss that 8 a.m. window, you go to the following morning? We have a little play. It's not exactly 8 a.m. We can go later in the day, but we don't want to get too late. Um, sometimes when you get into too many delays, it's better just to recycle to the next day and start over. Okay. Um, now, given that you were so involved in the design, Talk to us about the design itself. You know, what is it that makes you believe this is the absolute best and most safest vehicle for Jeff Bezos and your first human flight? So the foundation of, of, uh, of the Dew Shepherd system safety is fault tolerance. And that is the idea that if something goes wrong, anything that you need for safety, that there is a backup system for that. And in most cases, there is a backup to the backup system. It's called two fault tolerance, meaning we can suffer in most cases, any random combination of two failures or human errors and still get people uh, down to the ground safely. So I can give you a few examples. Yeah, I'd so love to hear it. the most prominent one is um, the crew escape system. So if there is something wrong, it's detected on the booster during ascent. At any moment, in a fraction of a second, we can ignite a solid rocket motor that will send the capsule and the crew away to safety. That's one example. Another example is there are three parachutes on board. Um, they have always worked. We've never had a failure, but uh, in case, if only one of the three parachutes opens, we can still land safely. And that is just the tip of the iceberg. Every mechanism, every battery, every computer, every wire even on the vehicle has a backup. Wow. So are you talking about the drogue parachutes and the main parachutes as well? The drogues and the mains. Each drogue is attached to one main, and so we could those two together are a single parachute string, and we only need one drogue to come out to pull out one main parachute, and we can still land safely. Okay. Um, so, you know, how does this milestone fit into Blue Origin's future? I mean, Jeff Bezos has talked about building a road to space, and once you're there, humans can do amazing things. You know, say this week goes off without a hitch, then what's next? Right. So this is a lot more than just about New Shepard, because New Shepard, really, you cannot really understand the New Shepard program without looking at the broader context of what Blue Origin is trying to accomplish. So the mission of the company is to make uh, humans a space-faring civilization in order to preserve the Earth. It's, it's, it's about um, saving Earth, because Earth is a finite place. It doesn't have unlimited resources but there are essentially unlimited resources even in our solar system. So in order to do that, what we've decided to focus on is space transportation. And has, in order to make us a spacefaring civilization, we have to make space travel routine and safe. And uh, the suborbital mission of New Shepard is a great place to start with that. All the technologies that we've chosen 
the architecture of the new Shepard vehicle have been chosen with that greater mission in mind. Mm -hmm. So vertical powered landing, the way that we land the rocket, that is the way you land rockets, say, on the moon. You, you cannot do it with wings. Mm -hmm. The choice of propellant on New Shepard, we use liquid oxygen, liquid hydrogen. It is the most complicated and high performing propellant to work with, mm -hmm. but that is what you need to go to the moon. And if you are on the moon, you can extract water from the moon and refuel your rockets. And so all of these things fit together. New Shepard has a space tourism mission, but it is part of a much greater story. And basically you built the rocket to be able to land on the moon, refuel, and go to its next destination. We've built basically the fun foundational building blocks of technology that we can then translate to, to the other programs. New Shepard won't land on the moon, but derivatives of all those technologies we're developing will be part of our other programs. Well, speaking of that, you're also working on the New Glenn rocket. Can you give us an update on production? So we are targeting to launch New Glenn uh, by the end of next year. It is progressing through manufacturing. We are past most of the design reviews, and, and uh, it is going well. So when will Jeff Bezos be able to orbit the Earth? I don't think I can comment <laughs> on that. So you wake up in the morning. What's the first thing you check? The first thing I check? You. Well, what's, what, you, you know, tomorrow morning, you're going to wake up. What's the first thing you're going to check? I'm probably going to check that, uh, that there aren't any messages uh, for <laughs> anomalies. But most of the launch crew is going to assemble at about midnight, um, actually tonight, to do the rollout. So I will be getting a little more sleep because I'm supporting the webcast and the second shift. So by the time I wake up, the launch operation would have been happening for several hours already. Well, and obviously you've already worked through many emergency scenarios. You talked about the emergency um, procedures, but if there was one thing keeping you at, up at night, what would it be? If there was going to be an issue, what could it be? Right. So as an engineer, you can never escape the gremlin of unknown unknowns, meaning you're always going to question whether there is something you've forgotten or overlooked, and you can't quite put your finger on it, but it might exist. I mean, and, but that is, at this point, what I'm worried about. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I don't know how much more thorough we, we uh, could have been. We've brainstormed and attempted to identify and mitigate all the risks that we could think of, whether or not there's, you know, we're, we're not as smart as we really think we are. So the only thing you can't control is the weather. You've chosen a morning launch window, which is generally more clear. I understand you were testing, using some weather balloons to test um, today and yesterday. What have those tests told you so far? So weather balloons are a normal part of our launch operation mm -hmm. because space launch is very sensitive to upper air winds. Yeah. Um, the upper air winds are actually just fine. The only concerns uh, related to weather are forecast if there's thunderstorms in the area. This is West Texas in the summer. There tend to be th thunderstorms. There's always the possibility, but we have, at this point, we're well practiced in our rollout criteria related to weather. And you mentioned that some of the things that uh, your technology can do, like landing on the moon, is not something you could do with space plane technology, right. which is, I assume you're alluding to Virgin Galactic there and their technology. What do you think makes Blue Origin's technology special and different from Virgin Galactic, and even from SpaceX, which is a vertical takeoff and launch? So we have a very, very, very different approach and a very different system from those other companies. Mm -hmm. Competition is good. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, it's healthy to see that there are so many players in the market mm -hmm. trying different approaches. Mm -hmm. And in the end, if any successful industry will have multiple winners. And so for someone who's been in this industry for you know, more than two decades, how do you see the space race, the competition, the vision playing out? I, we don't think of it as a race at Blue Origin. Um, we are in this for the long term. And by long term, I don't mean five years. Mm -hmm. I don't mean 10 years. The vision of Blue Origin is generation spanning. Mm -hmm. I will not see it happen in my lifetime, mm -hmm. my, maybe not even in my children's lifetime. That is how long the, the horizon of Blue Origin's vision is. And I'm very excited to be part of these, this early step, but it will keep on going. 